Hi guys, I'm Lex. My fish tried to bite my finger off. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to introduce you to a book that I found last week at Hobby Lobby and it is called Draw 500 Fabulous Flowers by Lisa Congdon and I have fallen absolutely in love with this book. I watched a video not too long ago uh, by Emily Artful called it Anxiety Flowers and why they're important. I think that's what the, the title of the video was. I'll link it below in the description if you would like to watch it yourself. But she basically talks about the importance of um, just kind of painting for yourself and painting something simple. And I just really like her ideas in the video. So I found this book and if you want me to flip through it just a little bit, it's got a lot of white space on it. And then it has lots of just kind of little doodle flowers in it. And I really, really, really love this idea. And I actually found a class online about how you can um, incorporate some doodle flowers into your painting. So we're going to actually doodle some flowers today in this book. And then at the end of the video we're going to try to incorporate some of our doodle flowers into a small painting that you guys I hope will um, doodle along with me and I hope you'll paint along with me at the end and maybe it'll relieve some stress let's get started I'm just going to um, it is draw 500 fabulous flowers so I actually started at the beginning of the book and you can see I used a, a pink pencil to start with and what I'm going to do today though is I'm going to just open up to a random page Ta -da! no there's a card how about <laughs> this random page these look a little bit easier um, this book won't stay flat very well, so I'm gonna have to hold it down while we doodle. Let's see, I've got my trusty mechanical pencil out here. And which one do we wanna start with? Let's go with this one, it looks pretty easy. center and then some lines coming out from the center sometimes two sometimes three Try to keep talking while I'm doing this, but it's kind of part of anxiety flowers is you get into it and it's some stress really. I do this sometimes at um, a restaurant or um, a concert. I go to concerts a lot and if I get to the concert early, I like to get out a small paint palette that I have that's a travel size and a small book that I take with me everywhere that's a watercolor book and I like to paint roses in it and um, different different anxiety flowers basically just flowers that that they don't matter what they look like we don't need this one next it doesn't matter what they look like it doesn't matter if they're real flowers or based on real flowers. And I think I put too many petals on that one, but you know what? It doesn't even matter. Let's 
You can do these from your head. Make up your own flowers. It's really, there's, there are no real rules to it. They don't have to look perfect. They just have to make you happy. I'll be back in the center here, so I'm gonna put a dark shadow and lots of lines coming out. I will put a link in the description below to this book on Amazon in case you're interested in it. I really, really love this book and I take it with me when I go places. Um, in case I get a little bit anxious because I do have panic disorder and it, it helps me a lot to get this book out and just start drawing on its pages. if you want to, if that helps. Let me switch over to this page. See, that one's easy. No leaves or anything on that, but guess what? I want to put leaves on it. I'm going to do this one. It doesn't matter what color they are. It doesn't matter what shape they are. Let's pick another page. Love how this book has so much extra room in it. I didn't realize it even when I got the book that it had so much extra room so that you can draw flowers along in it. But I was really excited when I realized that it did.
and look like a sunshine. <laughs> I'm gonna have a teeny tiny little stem. Let's see if we can do it. Uh, sort of. I like its leaves, they're really cute. Not bigger. <laughs> painting yet this is just my second video but um, I'm just learning so you're gonna be learning along with me and I might make mistakes and you can totally call me out in the comments on any mistakes that I make this one's really pretty I'm gonna try it before we stop um, hopefully you'll be kind about it and just nicely make a suggestion on how I can do something a little bit better. Draw 500 Fabulous Flowers by Lisa Congdon, and I will link it in the description below. Let me get my paints out. I'm going to get some Strathmore cards out. These are artist trading cards, and I just think they're the cutest size. Um, these are not 100% cotton, but it's okay for what we're doing today. 100% um, cotton is usually a lot easier to use, but these are um, cold press watercolor artist trading cards by Strathmore. And I like making little small doodles on them. And maybe really, really small paintings. Sometimes I give them to friends. my number three micron pen. And what we're going to do is we're just going to doodle some flowers on the card. And like I said, they don't have to be real flowers. It does help if they're different sizes. And you'll see why once we start painting after we put some of these down. Thank you. 
eat something. Make sure you leave some space in between because we're going to put some grass down. Some of you are drawing along with me. I'm using um, a micron pen because they do not run or smear when you put watercolor down over them. That is definitely what we want for today. That's enough. Let's cut some grass down. Just some big grass. Big thick grass strokes. Different sizes. You can put one or two or three. As many as you want. I feel like I'm Bob Ross right now. I'm like, put some happy little grass down. <laughs> Hopefully this video is not too boring. I'm, I'm hoping that it's calming, but also a little bit entertaining at the same time. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room down here to put my initials. So we've got our flowers down. Put my pen away. And what you want to do, I have a little spray bottle here of water. You want to activate your paints. And I'm using um, White Knight's watercolors. It's the St. Petersburg White Knight's watercolors. Um, let's see, let's pick a brush. Doesn't need to be too big. I'm gonna pick a size four silver black velvet. I've got two bottles of, or two jars of water over here. One's a really big jar and one's a smaller jar. The really big jar is to rinse off my paint 
And then the really small jar is for clean water, if I want to put clean water down on the paper. And normally what I do is I put my paints into this. But I think what I'm gonna do for this one today is I'm just gonna take straight from the palette because we're not doing anything exact. We're just kind of having a little bit of fun with it. And I'm gonna do the wet on wet technique, which means you put down some water on your paper Normally I would tape this down, but it's so small that I'm not going to. You tape it down because um, once the water gets into the paper, it could start to buckle. The paper will buckle and it will just be kind of a blobby mess. So I didn't go over the flowers, I went with my water around the flowers. It's okay if you went over the flowers a little bit, it's no big deal. This is just kind of your own, your own interpretation of how you want to do it. You can see my, my paper is already buckling a little bit. I'm going to take um, a few colors, starting out with, let's see, let me get my, my little palette or my little swatch thing down here. We're starting out with this turquoise blue, and I'm just gonna dot it around and let it spread itself out. I'm not that great at color theory. Rinse my brush off. So, I'm gonna have to be really careful about what goes with turquoise blue. Let's go with this rose magenta. Next, I'm gonna dot this around because I think these two colors look pretty together. this Hansa yellow here, which is four over. Brighten it up a little bit. It's actually gonna turn a little bit green, but that's okay. Green looks good too. It's gonna turn a little bit green when it mixes with the turquoise. But I'm okay with that. Paper's starting to dry already because it's not watercolor paper. I mean, it is watercolor paper, but it's not, like I said, it's not 100% cotton. So it's not gonna work quite as well as you want it to. Um, I think I'm gonna be done with this. Unless, I haven't done this before. I've made this sort of a painting before, but I think what I wanna do is maybe color in the green grass just a little bit. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just going to put color down over it using my um, yellowish green. Just straight from the palette. And this part down here wasn't wet to start with, but I did spray down my, my paints. So that means the, the paint itself is wet. So this is kind of a wet on dry technique here. our finished piece. I'm going 
gonna let it dry a little bit and then I'm gonna come back and show you the results. Okay guys, we're back and our painting is dry. Let's see if I can get it centered on here for you so you can look at it. The light's not shining on it now. <laughs> That's what it looks like. It's actually flattened itself back out since it dried, which is convenient. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you do, please like it and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see any more of my videos, which hopefully is going to be at least weekly. I'm going to try to do twice a week, but we'll see how that works out for a while. I do have my Instagram listed below in the description if you want to follow my Inktober posts and also see what other artwork I've been doing. And hope to see you next time. Okay, bye.